Hello everyone, bringing you a video today which is a remake of one of my previous videos and what we're looking at in this video is the British DMS Jungle Boot. Now this is the follow-on from the preceding design which was of course the canvas and rubber Jungle Boot which was used from the immediate post-war years right the way through into the 1970s in some instances. And the DMS Jungle Boot was an adaption of the DMS boot design taking elements from the US jungle boot design to make something which was really inferior to the US boot. And US boots would be issued to some degree to British troops as well, they're far better. And now I have a nice pair of the US boots, so I thought it would be worth remaking this video, having a look at the British DMS boot and comparing it to some degree uh, to the US boot, obviously just visually looking at the pair of them together. And that's what we're going to do in the video now. So here they are, the British DMS jungle boots. Now, these are basically the lower of the, the DMS boot. You can see that in the sole here, the details on the bottom there, made by Thema, as you can see, and then these are size 11S. The tread pattern is exactly as, as you'd expect to find on a DMS boot. And then apart from the lack of a toe cap, the uppers to this point are very similar to the DMS. You don't have a toe cap and therefore the pebble grain leather extends right the way round and obviously up here for the eyelets as well, whereas normally the, the toe cap on the DMS is smooth leather. So obviously pebble grain all the way around. The drainage eyelets on this side, as you can see, which is a feature taken from the US jungle boots. And then the uppers are made of, it feels like cotton or at least a cotton mix. So this is not nylon. You have a worsted tape as the sort of strengthening piece around the, the top opening there cotton what feels like cotton duck down here and then a stitch strengthening piece again of the sort of herring, herringbone tape just over the ankle there and then you have a leather backstay as you can see and the manufacturing quality of these just looking at them is not superb and you can you can just it's difficult to sort of get across in the video I guess but the there are rough edges the obviously the DMS sole and everything. These were made at the sort of the low point of DMS. Uh, DMS, when they were first introduced, were actually not terrible. Their manufacturing quality was, was a lot better than it would be later on. Uh, manufacturing quality dropped off quite significantly during the course of the 1970s. And these were made sort of at the low point of that period. And they share the issues in terms of manufacturing quality that you would see with the standard DMS boot as well. We do have nylon laces that's something in common with the US jungle boot and of course these would be issued with the standard insoles we have a pair of those here still with their labels you can see that here with the late 70s date on one of them visible which are very sim these are very similar to uh, insoles which have been issued at least since the Korean War they're issued with the cold wet weather boot of course they're very similar to those that were issued with the US jungle boot as well so and see details on the back here let's see if we can get that in camera so you can actually read it there we go that should be somewhat legible hopefully without too much lens flare off it so a pair of those there just for way of illustration I'll remove one of these boots now and bring in one of the US boots so we can compare directly so we have the US jungle boot here slightly larger size what well, they are tall they're, they're they're just slightly taller I don't know if you can see there they're about half an inch taller, something like that. And the construction, as you can see, you can see exactly where the British design has taken its influence from, but you can already see in probably in the camera, the shine there, the US uppers here are made of nylon duck and nylon webbing, as opposed to the, what appears to be cotton or cotton mix here. So these would dry a lot more rapidly, a lot better than on the British boot. The manufacturing quality Again, just looking at them and, and handling them, you can see the difference. These, of course, have the Panama sole. These are the later examples. These are later examples. Um, these ones were made in, there's a date in them somewhere. Let's see if we can find it here. Oh, they're on the front of the tongue, I think. Uh, Spike protective 12R, 68. There we are. So these are 1968. So they predate these. Uh, by quite quite a margin. You can see we can compare the drainage eyelets around on the side here. You can see perhaps the, the British eyelets are a little bit better. I don't know precisely with that whether they would be better in the field. They're slightly larger and have a mesh section over them rather than being these sort of small holes 
in a brass uh, insert there, uh, sort of riveted into, into place on the US boot. But as I say, overall, the difference in manufacturing quality is, uh, is quite significant. You can see how the, the seams and everything, the construction is very similar between the two. You can definitely see where the British boot has taken its influence from it. It's, it's a, essentially a copy, but using the British boot manufacturing technology of the time, or, or certainly deriving much of its construction from the existing DMS boot rather than being a copy of the US boot. Obviously, the US boots would be issued in certain instances. They were far better than these. And why these weren't just purchased in in the first place, I imagine expense would be the answer to that. Uh, given the US had such an experience, you know, so much experience of the tropical kit by the 1970s, and th these boots had been through so much development and have become such a refined design, you know, you'd think that uh, sense would prevail and that these would simply be purchased in for use in jungle environments rather than trying to come up with something cheap and nasty uh, as a, uh, a version of them for British troops. But that's uh, about par for the course of that time and uh, unfortunately is a, a familiar story. Take this out of the way again, bring the other one back in. As far as I'm aware, these were introduced in the late 1970s or early 1980s. I'd actually be interested to know of an introduction date for these. And I believe their issue was quite limited. I've, I've heard of some people, I remember on the previous video I made looking at these, people did remember them, certainly not with fond feelings as I remember. I think they were much maligned. They share many of the problems that existed with the DMS boot in the first place, of course, in terms of manufacturing quality. But nevertheless, an interesting design, an interesting take on the jungle boot, obviously, trying to marry up existing British manufacturing with the US design and coming up with something which is markedly inferior, I would say. As I say, it is interesting that they went for what appears to be a cotton upper rather than using the nylon. The whole point of the nylon, of course, is that it's supposed to dry out rapidly. Uh, I, a very strange choice to me. And again, the leather backstay is an interesting feature brought across from earlier examples of the US jungle boot. One thing I didn't mention with the US example, which I will just mention now, is the backstay is actually made of nylon on the US boots by this point, as you can see. It was leather earlier on in one of the earlier patterns. But the earliest pattern had a leather band around the top as well. But by this late point in production, the backstay had been changed to nylon, as you can see there. So there they are, the British DMS jungle boot with a comparison to one of the late production US jungle boots, Vietnam, late production Vietnam War era jungle boots, as we've seen there. So I hope you found it interesting looking at that. The British DMS jungle boot, I remember from comments on the previous video and things I've read elsewhere online, they were not well liked for obvious reasons, the, the quality compared to the US boot is severely lacking, which again is no surprise given the, the history of British boot manufacture for the army at the time. Uh, but nevertheless, an interesting thing to have in the collection. They're an interesting bit of kit, an interesting attempt to adapt the US design to British manufacturing and the pre-existing pre British design of DMS boot, obviously taking elements from both. So hopefully you've found it interesting looking at this as well. If you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated as I always say, thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down below as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.